Hello Grade 11s! Circle geometry has many theorems and in this lesson we will introduce the one relating to cause and radii. We will follow this up with some examples of where the theory is applied. We now switch over to John and Kanya to present the formal proof for this theorem. Now we are ready to tackle the first circle theorem. We call it the chord theorem. This is what it states. A line drawn from the center of a circle perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. Let's create a diagram first. Clearly we need a circle with a center. We need a line drawn from the center and we need a chord. We must make the line perpendicular to the chord. Your diagram is a sketch, so you don't have to measure the 90 degrees angle exactly but it helps if it looks accurate. It also helps us to use letters to label the diagram. Let's use O for the center, called AB, and P where the line meets AB. Our diagram now represents what is given in the theorem. What is it that we need to prove? We need to prove that AB is bisected by OP. In other words, that AB is cut in half and AP equals PB. We have some theorems about triangles that should help us. So it makes sense to construct triangles by joining OA and OB. Now, have a good look at the diagram. Is there some way to prove that AP equals PB? that P is the point that bisects AB. I hope you remembered congruent triangles. If we can prove that the two triangles are congruent, then it will follow that the remaining corresponding parts are equal. For congruency, you need three corresponding things that are equal. Pairs of equal sides, and or pairs of equal angles. OP is common to both triangles. OA and OB are both radii of the circle. So they are equal and both angles at P are 90 degrees. These three reasons make the triangles congruent and so AP equals PB. Let's write this down as a formal proof. Follow the thinking as I write it down. We are given a circle center O with code AB and OP perpendicular to AB. We construct OA and OB and we are required to prove that AP equals PB. We prove this with congruency in triangle OAP and triangle OBP. OP is common. OA equals OB. They are both radii and angle OPA equals angle OPB equals 90 degrees because OP is perpendicular to AB. Therefore, the triangles are congruent. Therefore, the remaining sides and angles are equal, and so AP equals BP. Thank you, John and Kanya. The proof they have presented can be asked for in an examination, and so it is necessary that we know it off by heart. The acceptable abbreviation for this theorem, when you use it in a proof, is line from center perpendicular to chord. We will now look at an example where this theorem is applied. In the diagram, AB equals 60 centimeters and CD equals 80 centimeters. The lines CD and AB are parallel and the radius of the circle, center O, is 50 centimeters. Determine the shortest distance between the parallel lines. To do this, we will first need to put in some construction lines. These are lines 
that we add to the diagram to make it possible to determine the distance between the parallel lines. We construct the radii OD and OB. We start our working by using the theorem that John has just proved for us. It states, the line from the center of a circle perpendicular to the chord bisects the chord. We were given that CD is 80 centimeters. So we can say that FD equals 40 centimeters because line from the center perpendicular to the chord. Our next step is to state that the radius is 50 centimeters and this was given to us. In this triangle, the hypotenuse is 50 centimeters and one of the sides is 40 centimeters. We know that one of the primary Pythagorean triples is 3, 4, 5, and this means that we know the third side must be 30 centimeters. Therefore, OF is 30 centimeters, and the reason is Pythagoras. Let's repeat this argument for the second triangle. Since we know AB is 60 centimeters, we can say EB equals 30 centimeters because of the line from the center is perpendicular to the chord. We once again state that the radius was given to us and has the measurement of 50 centimeters. Once again, we use our knowledge of Pythagoras to determine OE equals 40 centimeters. We write it up and move on to our final answer. The distance of EF would equal the distance of OF added to OE. Therefore, the distance of EF is 70 centimeters. This was a simple use of our first theorem. We now go back to John and Kanya to discuss the converses of this theorem. Can you work out what the converses of this theorem will be, Kanya? Um, I'm not sure. Instead of proving that the chord is bisected, we now need to prove that the line is perpendicular to the chord. If we know that the line bisects the chord, can you now tell us what the statement of the converse is, Kanya? A line drawn from the center of a circle that bisects a chord is perpendicular to the chord. Correct. This proof can be set up quite easily using a similar diagram to the one we have just used and using congruency again. Thank you, John and Kanya. We now use this theorem in an example. It is given that in circle center O, AB equals 80 centimeters, MO equals 40 centimeters, and AM equals MB. Calculate the diameter of the circle correct to two decimal places. We begin by constructing the radius OA. Let's use the converse theorem that states, the line from the center of a circle that bisects the chord is perpendicular to the chord. Because AM equals BM, OM is perpendicular to AB. We state that AM is 40 centimeters and that OM was 40 centimeters as was given. We are going to use this right angle triangle and these two measurements. OA is equal to the square root of 40 squared plus 40 squared. This is calculated to be the square root of 3200 which is equal to 56,56854 for the radius. Therefore, the diameter of the circle is 113,14 centimeters, correct to two decimal places. Let's consider another converse to this theorem. The theorem is stated as, the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center of the circle. We can use this abbreviation when using this in proofs and writers. Perp bisector of chord. We have to prove this using a method called proof by contradiction. This is when we make a false statement and prove it to be false. By doing that, we prove that the theorem is true. The method is sometimes called by its Latin name, reductio ad absurdum. Here we have the diagram and we can clearly see that TM is a perpendicular bisector of chord AB. We are required to prove that this line passes through the center of the circle. So we make our assumption 
that the center of the circle does not lie on this line. And we sketch it accordingly. We also take this opportunity to number the angles around the point M. Our first statement in the proof is that angle M3 is 90 degrees as this comes from the line being perpendicular to the chord. We then go on to state that angle M1 is also 90 degrees as this was given. Our conclusion is that angle M1 and angle M3 sum to 180 degrees. However, this is impossible since angle M1 and angle M2 and angle M3 sum to 180 degrees because of angles on a straight line. The only conclusion we can make is that angle M2 is 0 degrees and hence point O must lie on the line TM. This concludes the proof. Thank you for joining us grade 11s. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section. You will also be able to learn more about circle geometry on our website www.mindset.co.za Goodbye!